Hello again! In the previous episode, I talked about the Battle of Britain, which was originally meant to be the preliminary phase of the actual invasion. Air superiority was not attained, but in the meantime, several invasion plans were drawn up, and this activity also deserves its own episode. Adolf Hitler hoped that Britain could be forced to start negotiations. His idea was always that Britain and Germany would work together, at least until Germany completes the conquest of the continent. Foreign Secretary Lord Halifax and his supporters were ready to start peace talks, but in the May 1940 war cabinet crisis, they were defeated by Churchill. There would be no peace, so invasion was back on the table. The focus was on Operation Sea Lion, the invasion of southern England by naval, airborne and ground forces. Although the Kriegsmarine was skeptical from the start, plans were drawn up, while invasion barges were being gathered in German, Dutch, Belgian and French ports. Air superiority and mining the Strait of Dover were needed to keep the much stronger home fleet away from the channel and rule the sky over the southern part of the island, after which the German navy would show up in force and deliver the invasion forces to their targets. Directive number 16 in July listed four major requirements, but more memorandums followed from the navy, complaining about the heavy burden, asking for a delay until May 1941, when the two new battleships, Bismarck and Tirpitz, would be ready for action. The Luftwaffe was ready to start operations in August, but gathering the barges would take at least mid-September. Hitler's next directive in August ordered massive Luftwaffe attacks. It seems he hoped that the British would sue for peace without an actual invasion. In Sea Lion, three armies would participate in three waves. Overall, with 19 infantry and mountain divisions, along with 8 panzer and motorized divisions, supported by two airborne divisions. The army desired a wide front, while the other two branches opted for a narrow front, which they could effectively support. The British first considered East Anglia as the likely target, but as German barges were being gathered in French ports, this indicated that the real target was the south coast. The coast would be defended by six infantry divisions and two independent brigades. In reserve, there were two armored divisions and one armored brigade, along with two infantry divisions and one brigade around London. The Germans employed deception, but the only available ship was the heavy cruiser Admiral Hipper. It would have to operate alone in the North Sea and draw home fleet's attention. Four minefields were laid in the channel, these did some damage, but no action was taken to prevent their clearing by the British. Gathering enough transports was another problem. The Navy lacked landing crafts, while the troops had no experience either. In Norway, no beach landings took place. Prototypes were being tested in 1940. They were not ready. The first MFPs would only be delivered in 1941. Instead, more than 2,000 river barges were gathered, not all of these were powered, so tugs were also collected, but since loading the equipment and vehicles would take about a week, each wave would occur after a 10-day delay. By the end of August, 250 panzers were converted to amphibious use, prototypes of heavy landing bridges were delivered, along with portable landing bridges and amphibious tractors, although mass production suffered delays. In Operation Mino, Contact was established with the IRA in Ireland, but the Germans failed to assess the true strength and influence of this organization. In Operation Lobster, saboteurs were sent to Britain and Ireland by the Abwehr, the German military intelligence service, although Ireland's importance was reduced as three German agents were quickly apprehended there in another mission. Although some espionage missions were successful, results were not significant, Many other plans had to be aborted. Already in August, Churchill sent a tank division to North Africa, while a large detachment of home fleets sailed to Dakar to neutralize the French battleship Dunkirk and put French West Africa under the control of the Free French Movement and General de Gaulle. The latter action failed, but it showed that Churchill no longer believed in a German invasion. 
By mid-September, Hitler was also convinced air superiority was not achieved, ground and air forces were needed elsewhere, so Operation Sea Lion was indefinitely postponed. Even before the fall of France, the British possession of Gibraltar became a German target, along with North Africa and the Suez Canal. Plans were drawn up, but when Wilhelm Canaris, head of the Abwehr, visited Spain and talked with General Francisco Franco, he tried to convince him to stay out of the war. Canaris was against the Nazi regime, but Hitler still trusted him at this point. In late August, the plan to seize Gibraltar was approved, relying on a relatively small force. After that, Hitler met Franco himself in October at Andai, where Franco emphasized the need for large economic assistance before Spain could enter the war. He doubted that the British would capitulate even if Britain was lost. It soon became obvious that he would not join the Axis. In March 1941, Operation Felix was thrown up, relying on the original plan, but the focus was now on the invasion of the Soviet Union. Back in October, Hitler also met with Marshal Pétain, head of the new Vichy French government. He wanted to turn the French against the British, which was not that difficult since in July a British fleet had attacked a French naval base at Marcel Kabir, sinking one battleship with 1,300 sailors and damaging others. Diplomatic relations between the two former allies were severed, tensions then grew when the British tried to take French West Africa in September. Still, since both Spain and Italy wanted French territories, and Hitler wanted to avoid such territorial changes, he could not promise much, so the two sides agreed to cooperate in the future, but nothing else. Pétain, who first and foremost wanted the release of hundreds of thousands of French prisoners of war, had to wait for concrete results. Hitler then met with Mussolini in Italy on the 28th of October. He complained about Franco and his ridiculous demands, but he was also mad at his Axis partner for invading Greece without any prior notice. He was tasting his own medicine, he had done the same to Mussolini several times. At that point, it was not clear that the Greek campaign would turn out to be an utter failure, so the emphasis was on North Africa, where Italian 10th Army advanced into Egypt, but stopped due to supply issues. The island of Malta was an obvious target, the British naval base threatened Italian supply convoys and made it easier for the Royal Navy to conduct operations in the Mediterranean. Plans had already been drawn up in the late 1930s, but no action was taken, as the Italian Navy lacked the necessary landing crafts and it wasn't confident regarding its chances against the Royal Navy. The situation worsened during the early stages of the war. The British raided Taranto and damaged several large ships in November 1940. They were then victorious in the Battle of Cape Matapan in March 1941, partly because Italian radars were not yet available, they would only become standardized in the following year. German assistance was needed, but Rommel's victories in North Africa made the invasion seem unnecessary. The plan was then approved in April 1942. It required roughly 700 aircraft, one Italian and one German airborne division, along with one Italian infantry division, but beach landings with 70,000 more men were slated for the next two days. Passenger and cargo ships, along with ferries and motor boats, will also participate, but German devices, originally developed for Sea Lion, were added to the list as well. The four British infantry brigades, supported by an armored regiment and artillery, didn't have to do anything, as the invasion never took place. The North Africa campaign required more forces, Hitler no longer believed in massive airborne operations, but he also wasn't convinced about the Italian Navy's ability to properly support the invasion. None of these plans materialized. As the war progressed, the Allies gradually became stronger, while the Axis was losing manpower and resources that could not be replaced. The British Empire was not broken, but it was sufficiently weakened by the war, the process of decolonization would start soon. Thank you for watching. See you next time.